Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. Uh, we got our task list up and it shows tasks and there the data comes from program, but we had a very simple route for it. And our route was just you know, this slash task list. Yeah. What if we needed some more information to come through? So for example, and I'm gonna play with application here, we'll come back to the task list, but in task list, this is gonna be done with, with posts I want to deal with gets and routing first. Talk about some of the details of it. So what if I had a method, you know, I'm on a, I'm making a retail site. Users are giving me information about the product and, and often in the URL. So for example, if you want to share a product from one person to another, the, the URL has to encode all the information about the product so that when you share the URL, it goes to them. So I want to make a method that generates a product. Well, the thing is my products have some information about them. So there is a type to the product and it's a, going to be a string and we'll say they all have a number and it's a small enough number that can be represented as an int. And for now I'm just going to have this give back a little string that has that stuff inside of it. So I'll use some string interpolation here and say product type is dollar prod type and product num product number is dollar Product num. Okay, we'll just build a little string. I don't need to build a big view or have additional information. That's not relevant for, for the topic on, on this video. I somehow need to get this information into the action so that it can use it. Okay, and so that means that when we call this in our routes, I need to have a method that takes the data. Well, it's an interesting thought. What happens if we just make a get and so I'm going to have a get, how about we call this product and I'm going to call this product args to start off with and it will point to our controllers dot application dot our product type here. One thing you'll note is that when it filled it in it took off the string. If you don't specify a type on something by default it's a string but it left the int here and this is actually one of the things that I do absolutely love about play. If you've ever done any web development, a lot of times you get input from users or whatnot and you have to write a lot of code to validate them. Play will do that to a certain extent for us using the systems that are built into Scala. Scala is all about being type safe. And so if this thing needs to be a number, an integer, we don't want this to be called unless that's an integer. We'll see how that works out. Okay, so I have a route here, prod args, which should go to that uh, to that method. So let's pull up our website and instead of being task list this was product args and uh, actually I have a URL here from playing around with this. The product type is ABC, the product num is 123. We can go back and make sure that matches prod type, prod num and see what happens. So if I come up here and I hit enter, first off, if I screwed anything up, I should get a syntax error. I didn't. It built the string, says I have ABC and 123. And remember, this 123 has to be an int. So what would happen if I stuck an A there? I get this bad request. I love that. That's great. It told me that 123A isn't an int. Now note, I'm getting this highly informative message because I am in developer mode. If I had made the the production version of this uh, for distribution, I wouldn't get nearly as informative a message. And that's because if someone's trying to hack your site, you don't want them knowing all this stuff about your routing. But when you're a developer, this is really happy. You, qu uh, you very quickly find out what it is that you screwed up. So that's using kind of the standard way of passing arguments where we have a dollar sign and then an argument name followed by its value and an ampersand and an argument name followed by its value. You can also encode data in the routes in a different way in play. 
So for example, I'm going to make another route that is just simply product, and I'm going to put a colon followed by the name of the variable that I want over here, prod type, and then I'm going to put another colon and prod num. Now you've probably seen this on websites, once again, if, you're, if you go to online retailing sites, where the URL itself has things in it and they aren't in the arguments part. They're not after the, the question mark. They appear on the URL line. Now this is going to the same method. It should produce the same output, but I should be able to call it in a different way. So instead of having this rather verbose dollar sign prod type equals and prod name or prod num equals, I should just be able to say product ABC123 with slashes as different parts of the URL. And indeed that works. And just as before, if I try to make ABC not an integer, then I get uh, a similar error. This is really helpful. It allows you to put whatever formatting you want here so I don't have to build a whole bunch of different routes. I can programmatically pull data out of the route and pass it in. There's some other details that are worth uh, talking about. So with this colon, it goes from a slash to a slash. Everything that is between the slashes is going to be bound to prod type and passed in as, as a string. Similarly, everything after that slash. What if you wanted multiple slashes? Well, it turns out our routes file already has an example of that. If instead of using a colon, you use a star, this will match everything for the entire rest of the URL. So it has to be the last thing that's in there, but it will go across multiple slashes and then you can parse it however you want. Another possible thing that you can do that's really helpful is, you know, this prod type is a generic string. I could put anything I want inside of there. So, you know, ABC, one, two, three, capitals, uh, you know, anything that can go into a URL. If I start playing too much with punctuation, it'll fail uh, because URLs can't have all the punctuation. But, but right now, anything that I, you know, there's a lot of flexibility in here. What if my product type was more restricted? What if it was, say, a, just a number uh, or maybe let's like two letters followed by two numbers. Okay, something fairly simple. Well, there, there is an option for doing that in the routing. So we can do product, I'm gonna say RE. You can use regular expressions. So instead of having a colon like before, I'm gonna use a dollar and I give the name prod type just as before but I follow it with some angle braces. And in these angle braces, I get to put the regular expression that I want. Now I want two letters and I'm specifically going to make them lowercase letters. So I want A to Z and two of those. And then I want two digits, okay? Then I also need to have as before my colon prod num I say I have to have that. If I had left it out there, this route could still work, but anything that is a variable over here that doesn't appear in the route has to be an argument. I don't have to specify both prod type and prod num. I could make it so prod type is in the route and prod num is, uh, is, actually, is an argument in there. You can mix and match them however you please. But this route now has a restriction due to the regular expression if you're not familiar with regular expressions, don't worry about it too much. This is not a feature you use all that often, uh, but it's a powerful feature, and so it can be helpful. So if I go to product RE with this string that I had here, I get an action not found. Now, once again, this is giving us lots of information that if, if there were a hacker trying to break into my site, I would not want them to have all of this information. But for me as a developer, it's great because it's telling me, you know, these were the options that I had and this didn't match any of them. And that's of course because what I had typed in there isn't two letters followed by two numbers. If I use the form two letters followed by two numbers, I get a correct result. Okay, so this kind of gives you a feel for the power of routes and the things that we can do, putting them in our routing, and how that can be passed through to methods inside of our controllers that can build 
arbitrary output, whatever we want. As I said, we're not going to do this a whole lot in our task list, and the reason is because login information, and well, our tasks are intended to be private. They, they aren't products that people can share between each other. Um, and, and the login stuff should definitely be private. So we're going to use a lot more posts for that. And we'll come back in the next video and we'll start talking about how we can get information from post requests that will hold this stuff for us.